Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Big Soup Conspiracy. I'm your host, Zara Mizrahi, and if you've made it this far, it means something about soup isn't sitting right with you, and you're open to learning more about its shadowy agenda. And if you're still bought into the deep spoon, that's okay. Maybe your perspective will start to shift a little bit after listening to this episode. Some people tell me that I'm overreacting to soup, and they say that I'm going after an absolutely harmless food and that I should just shut my soup cooler and learn how to deal with its existence. But Big Soup has claimed lives. Here's what happened in Brazil in 2012. A woman named Ilda Vitor Maciel was hospitalized after suffering a stroke, unsuperlated. But the nurse mistook her IV for her feeding tube and accidentally injected her with soup, which killed her within minutes. Still think soup is harmless? Or is there something inside of you that realizes, behind the supposedly comforting bowl of mushy, half-rotten vegetables, there's a much darker reality we have to confront? In today's episode, I'm going to play you a conversation with the biggest super I know, my buddy Greg. As you can imagine, I have dozens of conversations every week with soup fanatics who try to convert me, which has only solidified my beliefs. But in order for you to understand my mission, it's necessary to hear me duke it out with someone who's deep in the bowl. This lays out my stance pretty clearly, along with my backstory, some data points you haven't heard, which all lead to how I became your anti-soup coalition leader. And if you're a soup slurper yourself, I'm sure listening to Greg's point of view will make you feel heard. Hope you enjoy this one. Whether you're into fork food or spoon slop, I'd love to hear your thoughts after you listen. I wanted you on the podcast because you are one of the most tragic cases of a soup apologist I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's like tragic. That's, that's literally how I live my life. Every time I post something about soup hatred, you hit me with some insane superganda. And it's, it's, like, it's like you become possessed when you talk about your love for soup. <laughs> I don't I think I think possessed is a strong 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 adjective for my defense of the world soup culture. You love it so much. I'm not the only person. I'm in the majority of people on this earth that live for soup. I know, but like there are a lot of people who love a lot of things. There's something about the way soup people love soup that just makes my alarms go off. You know what I'm saying? Like, why can't you just like it? Why do you have to, like, fucking love it? It's not that. It's it's like when you come across someone that doesn't like dogs, it's like you're so stunned you don't know how to react. It's like your brain just goes haywire. So when you meet someone that is in such a minority of civilization that... You, you don't know how to react. And my, my only reaction is, what are you, crazy? Well, first of all, if you found out all of a sudden that dogs were actually trying to take over the world and destroy <laughs> civilization, you might have a different view of your love for dogs. You, you've never seen Air Bud then. I loved Air Bud, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Santa Paws. Come on, there's some great ones where dogs rule the world. There's like part of me that is so filled with anger about your soup love that like I want to just bitch slap you so hard every time you send me a picture of your lobster bisque or whatever hot flavor of tears you're into that day but there's another part of me that pities you so much for being so deep in the bowl and helpless in your love for soup that I just have to try to save you like I don't know how else to say it it's it's like it's it's like a, an act of charity for me oh to charity to, yeah to open your eyes and like convince you otherwise you're like legit a fucking soup anarchist but i mean first of all you don't need to pity me over my my love of soup i'll stand on the street corner with signs right next to all the wga writers and actors on the picket line i will picket my love of soup oh how noble you're so noble I know. i'm down hold up split p signs and just <laughs> attract all the other sad people in the world so I wanted you on the podcast because there's no one I know who loves soup more than you do. And there's no one who I feel I need to convince more than you. You're so far gone 
that I'm like, <laughs> Br- bring this guy on because like I'm going to expose Big Soup in this podcast and I just need you along for the ride. Seriously, like how did this even start with you? Like what makes someone, you specifically, have such a hatred towards soup? Well, it's funny because people ask me that all the time. They think it's like an arbitrary thing. Like, oh, you just hate soup. Well, you haven't tried this soup and that soup. And the answer is soup and I go way back in our hatred for each other. So it started, I was 10 years old, an innocent child who had no idea what was about to happen to me. I was at a family dinner and there was this one night we were, it was like a nice holiday and we were all sitting around the table And my grandmother was serving a huge bowl of soup for this dinner. And my dad goes to the kitchen to help her bring it out. They weren't serving it into individual bowls. They just had a huge bowl of soup that came to the table. My dad was holding this big bowl of soup and he reached over me to place the boiling hot thing on the table, tripped over my chair and spilled the soup on my head. Okay. This scarred me for life. That thing, I can still feel it on my head. It's like, it's one of those things, like, that was the moment I knew that Soup and I were going to have it out for each other until my death. It was like a soup baptism on my head. It was like, that was the moment I was like, oh, shit. Like, this is going to change my life from here on out. Can I just stop you for one second? Like, do you know what a baptism actually is? The Bible says... That a baptism creates a new identity. Is that a coincidence? It did create a new identity for me. That was literally the moment. It was like that scar on my head is like my Harry Potter lightning scar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I do. It was that. It was that moment. I was like, this thing is evil, P- and people love it. Like I was traumatized that day. I remember, like I wanted to cry, but I couldn't because I was <laughs> I was like a kid in front of all of my relatives for some like happy holiday thing. I get spilled on, and everyone's like, oh soup, I love it so much. It's like this shit is evil. What the hell? Why do people like it so much? Yeah, soup is evil. It is evil. So, like, after that, everything changed for me. Like, my hatred for soup governed my childhood, my fear of offending people when I didn't want it, my anxiety about going to a friend's house for dinner. And keep in mind, I grew up in a Mexican Jewish family, so pozole, matzo ball soup, all these things are, like, pillars of my family's culture. You have to be the black sheep of your family. How does a Jew Mexican not respect soup and soup culture that is so important to both of those ethnicities it's a good question this is why i've struggled my whole life with this because like people (laughs) are so obsessed in my family too and every time i'm like oh no i'm okay like my grandmother would yell at me it's a really it's a huge problem like I, i buried my soup baptism trauma for a while but the fear remained and then I like went on with my life pretending everything was normal you know but then COVID happened and then I mean you remember like cans of soup were flying off the shelves it was the number one apocalypse food and then every time I went to the market and saw all the empty shelves of of like cans the soup baptism trauma came flooding back and then that was when I realized I was like oh my god the people winning the pandemic is the soup companies, Big Soup. And people were convinced that they needed soup to survive. They were acting like infants sucking on Big Soup's teat. Like you, Greg. There's definitely a Big Soup conspiracy. I don't even know how to ask this question. The answers have to be in a little bit of insanity, but what exactly is your beef with soup besides what the time you got scalded with a little bit of soup? Like, Give me five points of your soup hatred. Give me five. There's got to be 105, but I'll just take five. Okay, okay, fine. So number one, soup is proof that something went wrong. You only (laughs) eat soup when you're cold, sick, heartbroken, or broke. Okay? Like, the, the last time I had soup was after I got broken up with and I lost my will to chew. Okay, that's when I have soup, is when something is seriously, seriously wrong. Number two, soup breeds weak people. 
if once you stop using your jaw, it's over. They got you. <laughs> Are you with okay. me so far? <laughs> no, I'm not. Not in the least. But <laughs> I mean, soup breeds weak people. It does I mean, breed weak you people. Know what? You know what breeds weak people? Like participation trophies, not soup. Soup doesn't breed weak people. Soup strengthens people. But go ahead. Soup is the participation trophy of the food world. Okay, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that okay. sigh as I, I, I got you on I, that one. I, I'm just waiting for the other three. Number three. Everyone looks dumb, evil, or <laughs> suspect as fuck when they eat soup. Have you ever seen... Okay, that you have to agree with, right? No one looks good yeah. eating soup. I mean, soup is not an, a meal... Like, it's not a sexy meal. No, it's definitely not. It's, 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 a, it's a meal to taste good and, and for people to enjoy. It, but it's not one that you look refined eating. But nobody looks like they're enjoying it when they're eating it. Like, have you it's ever seen... True. No, but have you ever seen that photo of Jake Gyllenhaal feeding soup to Kirsten Dunst? Like, she's a beautiful woman, and she turns into a goblin when she <laughs> eats the soup. Like, it's a disgusting portrayal of humanity. Like, you can't eat <laughs> soup. You can't eat soup without grimacing and tensing your eyebrows. Have you noticed so, this? Yeah, I mean, no, I haven't noticed that. But what, like, not to get off track, but what food is, like... A, a sexy, attractive food to eat. I mean, most foods are are just you look like a jackass gnawing into a spare rib, or I don't know, tofurkey. It's not like you're like, ooh, look at how hot this looks. It, it they all look dumb. Well, I think there's a more civilized way to look when you eat something like a steak because you cut it into a normal sized bite and then you bring it to your mouth and then you can chew it like a normal person or like a burrito where you just bite directly into a huge pillow and it looks and tastes beautiful whereas okay. like a, a soup spoon is like you have to like lean over to get it, it you have to do it in like these micro little pieces and it, you just look like a fucking idiot or you look like you're plotting the takeover of society which is more what i'm inclined to believe listen the spoon i will talk about the spoon later i i don't even want to get into it right now I'm, okay yeah we'll, we'll get to the spoon okay. the spoon is its own okay. thing but it's <laughs> it's a problem let's just say the spoon is a huge issue number four Soup is a beverage masquerading as a meal, okay? If you can slurp it, it's not food. It, it, that is just absolutely untrue. It's How can untrue. you say that? It's, 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 it's chunky liquid. It's not a meal. In what world is chunks satisfying to you? Just chunks? It's like, it's like people get so excited about soup because it looks like more food than it actually is, but it's really just hydrogen and oxygen atoms plus some chunks. And you could have a plate of just chunks. It's called food, but people don't want to believe that. So if you put the chunks in some kind of liquid base, it turns into a non-believable food? Yeah. It should be served with a straw. <laughs> Like a smoothie. Like soup should just be in in like jamba smoothie. Yeah, I would have I would have more respect for soup if it were served with a straw because I'm like, okay, at least they're not pretending that this is legitimate. You know what I'm saying? It, okay, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. We'll go on. What's number five? Okay. This is this is possibly the most concerning one. Okay. The fact that you have to bow your head to eat soup is a red flag to me. Like, why do you have to eat tiny bits of the food at a time and, and repeatedly dip your head up and down, like signifying devotion and subservience? Like, what are what are we bowing to? That just the act of like dipping the spoon, bringing it up, tensing your eyebrows and bowing your head, that's suspect as hell. I mean... May, that might be the only one of these that has even a tiny smidge of validity to me. Okay. But it's so far from full validity that it's it's almost 
irrelevant, but it's the only one of those five that is that has any credibility whatsoever. Okay. Well, I'm glad that there's a little bit of opening with you. I just, I right. like knowing that you can kind of see that maybe it's a little weird, just the fact that you have to do that to eat soup. And if I'm going to bring in the spoon thing for a second, the fact that you can only like drink a tiny bit of soup at a time to make for more head bows is really <laughs> fucking weird. Okay. So I'm just saying that. Well, it's, I mean, a fork, it's not like you could take a gigantic stab into something and gnaw on it. We're not animals. People do that with forks all the time. But they don't take giant pieces of something. They're taking, your point five minutes ago was you cut up your steak into pieces and you, you have a little piece at a time. Bits, I believe you called them. But bits. It, bits. 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 But you use a, a fork to poke a tiny bit and stick that tiny bit in your mouth. The soup is no different. You're taking a little min a spoonful and you're slurping it down. Well, I'm glad you brought up the slurp, Greg, because <laughs> that's that's the other truly, truly evil thing about soup. I know you wanted five points. This is kind of a bonus point. But the slurp is absolutely abhorrent. I don't know... The, the fact that we can make that sound at all is like it's 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 like God's cruel joke on humanity. But I've never heard anyone slurp soup without me wanting to literally kill myself sitting next to them. The, the slurp is the worst sound a human can make. And there's no way around soup without the slurp. That's true. It is true. Like listening... Like I do have a pet peeve when I'm in a in a restaurant or anywhere and someone is eating soup too aggressively, but there's a difference between aggressively eating your soup and eating your soup like a civilized person, not a fucking animal. Okay? But it's no like to me the the loud soup slurper is no different than the open mouth gum chewer. Like I want to stab them both. No, I agree with that. Like there it's all not okay. But the problem with soup is that it goes on for fucking ever because you can only eat so much at a time. You can have like a cent like a square centimeter of soup at a time. So the amount of slurpage is so much greater than it needs to be. OK, I, that I won't dispute. Like a loud slurper is annoying, annoying. But I don't want to like I'm not going to not eat soup because some asshole slurps his soup like it's the last thing he's ever going to eat on this earth. That's because you probably slurp your soup. So, like, these are your people. <laughs> I got to say, I have been told to shut the fuck up when I've been eating a bowl of soup every once in a while. But not, not, it's not a habit. But sometimes that soup is so good, it's, like, slurp worthy. Oh, God. You're so <laughs> deep in the bowl of big soup that I just, I'm so thrilled about the idea of you turning to the light to the bright side I, I would dark I, I don't know if I'm the darker light side I I feel the same way I I feel that it's it's my duty and it's an enormous maybe the biggest challenge of my life to pull you out of the soup matrix and come to and get out of the dark side you are in the soup matrix like no, I'm, I'm I'm the neo who sees through the realism and you are st you took the blue pill bud <laughs> you're the one you're the one who's like oh this thing like helps me feel better when I'm sick oh this thing is sl slurp worthy it's like none of it is none of it I don't know what to say I honestly don't like I'm I'm here and I'm questioning my existence on this earth <laughs> So I feel like I'm already winning. <laughs> I don't know for sure. I'm here because I'm willing to listen and try best I can to blow holes in all of this crock of shit. But if there's a big soup shadow agenda, then I'm down to try to expose it. But I also think that that's lunacy. Well, OK, what if I backed it up with statistics? Would that help? You're going to have to. Okay, great. I'll do it right now. So Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go for it. Okay. So there's an article in Gizmodo written by a woman named Nicole Wetzman. Okay. This is a real article. We can link to it wherever we can post links. But she lists <laughs> the statistics. And, and apparently, 
10,000 kids ages 4 to 12 every year are attacked by soup and have to go to the hospital. This is real. Like, d- d- is that not concerning for you? So I is it concerning for me? No, it's not concerning for me that a bunch of kids irresponsible spilled some soup on them. Or maybe it was their grandma that dropped some soup on their head when they were five years old. Sure, people are going to get injured eating food. Happens every day somewhere. Someone chokes on a gobstopper or like me. Pr- I mean, I've never gone to the doctor for this, but I have burned my mouth on on pizza probably 4,000 times in my life. No, but a pizza burn pizza. is very localized. When soup attacks attacks you it spreads it's like it's How? like the plague because it's How? liquid because it's not a fucking meal where does it spread so, I, I mean i don't feel attacked by a piece of cheese pizza I mean, right I'm because not, I like the burned. burn the roof of your mouth is only like two by three inches like when <laughs> soup spills it it's like it has feet of of a like a burn area okay so i That is just horse crap. (laughs) (laughs) What? How? Are you denying that like soup isn't burning liquid? It's burning liquid. No, soup is, not is, can be burning liquid, certainly. But if you get a little bit of soup spilled on you or, you know, a splash, that's a momentary Ouch. Maybe that hurts for a couple minutes if it's really super hot. But if you burn the roof of your mouth with a scalding hot piece of pizza, that's going to last for a couple of days. The skin flakes off the roof of your mouth. It's the most annoying thing ever. Certainly more so to me than any soup burn I've gotten. Maybe not. Maybe that not be true because you could really burn your tongue with soup. But either way, I don't hate pizza. I'm not on a crusade to convince everyone to stop eating pizza because it's evil. And this, every time you go into a pizza shop, they are consp- conspiring against the world to take it down. Well, if 10,000 kids a year went to a hospital because they kept getting burned by pizza, I might think a couple times about that. That's <laughs> that's that's concerning. And here here's here's the thing. Nicole Wetzman, the the author of this article. Sure. She, as far as I'm concerned, is our patron saint because your, she's one your. of all of the soup skeptics patron saint. OK, because she <laughs> is the only one willing to speak up against big soup. And she hasn't written about soup since this Gizmodo article came out. So she's clearly been silenced. Right. No, maybe people came out and are like, listen, lady, you're crazy, Mrs. Wetzman coincidence come on and also this article po- uh, posted in gizmodo i mean is that the new time magazine like is that the wall street journal of soup skeptics i don't understand like wh- gizmodo that's our source because that's the only place people are able to speak up against big soup without getting silenced and thrown and she still got silenced that was the only that was the only publication that was like you know what we're willing to take some big soup <laughs> knowledge here and I, and and as far as i'm concerned she's a brave journalistic hero and greg let's even if you don't believe that if if 10,000 kids a year spilled burritos on themselves do you think we would be having this conversation I don't even I don't know my my mind just got twisted in trying to follow that (laughs) I don't know I don't know first of all how you would burn yourself eating a burrito like you must have to be the most inexperienced eater on the earth to burn yourself on a burrito like well that's exactly the point no but that's the point is like burritos aren't dangerous soup is dangerous okay just this is a side note sidebar. This sounds like a giant onion article, like <laughs> But it's not. It's a Gizmodo I, article by I, the very near and dear Nicole Wetzman, who's You gotta photo... get her on. No, I know. We have I to. know. I I want everyone to tweet at her like just thank you. Just say thank you <laughs> to her. Because she's really could... doing God's work. And like yes. she and I are the only ones I know who are willing to like stand up and be like, yo. What the hell is going on with the soup thing? <laughs> like, when are people going to wake up? I mean, if soup is so bad, like, 
soup is served in so many places that support underprivileged people in need. I mean, and it's not just because it's cheap. It obviously has to be because it's nourishing and people like it. It makes them feel good. I mean, I've never been to a homeless shelter. I should probably go volunteer one. But my guess is when people go in who need food and they get a nice hearty bowl of soup, they are the happiest people on earth. Oh, yeah? How is the homeless population doing, Greg? It's terrible. Well, there you go. We're clearly it, not feeding them food that is keeping them sustained and strong, right? It's not the food that's keeping them homeless. It's almost cruel that we're like, oh, we care so much about you. Look at this huge bowl of water and some chunks. Here, have fun. Like, what? I, I don't know why you're so obsessed with chunks. It. I mean, it. I. I, I I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a little bit concerning. <laughs> I but mean, you what you serve... call soup, but you call, it's chunks. It's just chunks. Like, that's my point. OK, so I assume you feel the same way about serving soup to people in jail or rehabilitation centers or old age homes or hospitals like you must feel the same. But what what's the backup to that? Well, my backup is if you're in a hospital and we all know that they serve soup in the cafeterias, if you're going to get soup at a hospital cafeteria, you're not there for a happy occasion. Like no one is there to witness the birth of their baby. And then they go to the cafeteria and they're like, I'll have the soup to celebrate the birth of my child. It's like, no, someone's fucking dying and I need some soup because I can't chew anymore. If I was in the hospital... Not for something, but to whatever, birth of a child. And I go to the cafeteria and it's Tuesday split pee day. I'm the happiest guy in the room. I just had a baby and a bowl of split pea soup. It's no better. Oh, it's all broth, no bite. <laughs> not if you got, not if it's good split pea soup. It's not brothy at all. I mean. It's very slurpy though. Okay, what what about this? Can we talk about this for a second? Sure. Can sure. we can we agree that a huge percentage of serial killers come from soup territory, like very cold you, places? You're like, making do you think that, that up. Do you think that's a coincidence? No, I'm not. No, it's, I'm not. It's a made up fact. No, it's not. Okay, here, look. John Wayne Gacy from the Midwest, cold as fuck. Jeffrey Dahmer from the Midwest, cold as fuck. Green River Killer. Salt Lake City, Utah, cold as fuck. Also, Ted Bundy, one of the worst ones ever, was from Tacoma, Washington, cold as fuck, moved to Utah, cold as fuck, and killed in Colorado, cold as fuck. So is cold as fuck an actual temperature or is that a range of temperatures? It's soup territory temperature. Oh, that's what it is? Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to call bullshit. Because Ted Bundy killed people in Florida. I believe he was arrested in Florida. And I, I'm not 100% sure. I'm like 30% sure. But I think he was in jail in Florida. That's not cold as fuck. There's a few other big time serial killers that come from Florida. Let me just rattle off a few. The I-95 killer. You, you might have heard of him. That's not that long ago. The Casanova killer. And probably the greatest serial killer name of all time, the Gainesville Ripper, all from Florida. That's a good serial killer name. Yeah. So what you're saying is in the places that feel like soup, it also breeds a lot of serial killers. That's good spin. That's good spin. I I will say that... Um, that's a coincidence. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and Florida does not feel like soup year-round. It, it might be soupy for 12% of the year, two months. No, the rest of it's the months. so much more than yeah. that. It, it feels like minestrone when you're it, walking around Florida. No, no. It, if I was going to make Florida a soup... I would probably make it more like a French onion. That's accurate, too. <laughs> well, it's, it's what I would think Florida would taste like if it was a soup. 
So you like Florida a lot. Don't people love French onion soup? Isn't that like one of I, the ones people go fucking nuts over? No, like I, I like people do go nuts over over French onion soup and people do go nuts over Florida. I French onion probably wouldn't be in my top 10 soups. What are your top 10 soups? Oh, I th- a top 10? Okay, I fine. Top say, five. Top five. Top so five. top five soups would be, because I have to, uh, matzo ball not number one but it's top five i would say one of the most a, liquidy yeah it's, continue it matzo ball soup is is definitely arguably not even a soup it it's more like a big ball of mush yeah it's a but wet anyway, ball so <laughs> of soup i would i would say split pea I I like a good potato bacon soup, like potato bacon cheese soup. That's definitely top five. Gross. I would put um, mulligatani in okay. my top five. I would put, what else do I like in soup? I, I like a good New England clam chowder. I do, for sure. And lobster bisque. Yeah, you've sent me pictures of those. And I'm holding off on a few others because... That'll be a later conversation around stews and chilies and other things that I would probably put in my top five or six. But right now, that's my top five. So they're all pretty jawless. Um, jawless? I, I think you need a jaw to eat soup. <laughs> so I, you, you may not need any teeth, but I'm fairly certain if you didn't have a jaw, it would wind up in your lap. I just think that would happen. Yeah, I mean, but but if you don't need teeth to eat it, I mean, don't you think that that automatically either makes you a child or in hospice ad- about to die territory? Like, it may, every time I eat soup, which it's been years at this point, I feel, I'm like, am I six? Like, why do I need to eat food like this? I, I grew teeth for a reason. I want to use them so that I stay strong and feel like a human. You know what I mean? I feel so, like, debilitated every time I have soup. I'm like, well, it, I'm eating this because I couldn't get anything better, clearly. Um, I just disagree wholeheartedly on that. I think that that's what we're going to do here is have a spirited debate yeah. <laughs> of what is what is sensible and what is absolute whack jobbery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing like I know that I sound a little nuts, right? But like <laughs> It's the first step. You have such a soup sipper's smugness about you. <laughs> I just want to I just want to remind you that I'm sure Edison sounded a little nuts when he started talking about electricity. You no, know, nobody agrees with you. Nobody. I mean, you're, I, I'm sure I'm going to get slammed on social for saying that because, yes, there are some people that, that might agree with you. They are in institutions, but they're out there. What's the purpose here? Like, why are you doing this? The, the truth is, I'm not here for the money. <laughs> I'm I'm a crusader for truth. Like I'm I'm the Ralph Nader of the soup world. And and I know that there are others and I have to find them. And the the purpose of me starting to post all the anti soup stuff on social media, which is when I found out that you were like a total soup slurper. I wanted to find other soup skeptics cuz I remember being at the dinner table feeling so alone while everybody else was enjoying their soup. I kept asking myself, who are my people? There have to be others like me, and and I want to be a voice for the voiceless. That's that's just my mission. A voice for the voiceless, because the people who hate soup are just silenced. They have no voice. They've yeah. been minimized, marginalized. They're on an island somewhere, probably all to themselves. I mean, we can't find them. Is that what you're saying? That that's all exactly what haters? I'm saying. Yes, because because every time I post about my hatred for soup, I get a million messages, including you. It's like, have you ever tried tortilla? How could you say that about lentil? <laughs> and the fact that I can't just be like, yo, soup sucks without a million people like you just tearing me down means that like we are a marginalized group. Like soup haters need to rise up and be heard because you guys have had your time. OK, 
It's it's it, now it's on us. Soup lovers unite. We talk a lot about how like big soup has infiltrated our our children's education system which they have there's there's a book called ocean soup for kids that tries to talk about how the ocean is soup like now big soup is trying to claim mother nature and we also talk about technology and we we've had this conversation off the air but i want to say it here for the record um for the record big soup has infiltrated our technology how please please (laughs) please do us the solid and and elaborate on how that is okay have you ever used emojis greg i mean i sort of i you know emojis are for the much younger gen i i only use them when i'm lazy but i know what you're getting at so just go ahead and take us there if you've ever tried to use utensil emojis you can get a fork and a knife together or a spoon separately like a spoon is the only emoji you can get independently it's almost like big soup is saying the spoon reigns supreme and all the other utensils don't count like why can't i get a fork on its own why why of course they count but the spoon is the most powerful tool in the world you can do everything uh, listen to this and then go ahead shit on me you can you can do everything with a spoon that you can do with a fork and a knife but you cannot do with a fork and a knife everything or anything you can do with a spoon good luck killing a man with a spoon greg why do you think they make a spork they wouldn't have invented it but a spoon is so pa- you can do everything you can dig you can eat everything Anything you can eat with a fork, you can eat with a spoon. Anything. You, you cannot one thing you eat can't. a steak. You can't eat a steak with a spoon. Of course you can. Why can't you? You scoop the whole piece up and like throw it at your face. How do you eat a steak with a spoon? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. You don't throw the steak at your face. But if you have a knife, you can cut up your pieces and scoop them with a spoon. Okay, but that's the, you can make the same argument for a fork and a knife. No, you like, can't. You still need a knife with your no, spoon if you're going to eat no. your steak like that. Oh, maybe your steak. Maybe your steak, sure. But no sane person is going to try to eat, let's say, ice cream with a fork. None. Nobody. No one. <laughs> I do. You need I a spoon. No, of course <laughs> you do. do. You also I don't do. like soup. How, how? How do you eat ice cream with a fork? I can, I can say this really simply, and it actually makes a lot of sense. If the... Ice cream has melted so much that you can't eat it with a fork anymore. It's no longer ice cream. It's become soup and you shouldn't eat it. If when you can eat ice cream with a fork is is when you know it's still ice cream and it's safe. That is possibly the craziest thing you've said in this half an hour. I I need to I got to I need to write that down because I um I'm nervous for you. Like, I I think I'm going to call someone to come over and check your freezer for human heads. That's how psychotic that statement is about eating ice cream with a fork. I don't think it's any crazier than you saying that soup is a meal. Are you actually writing it down? I did. Yeah, I wrote it down. Um, oh, my God. It's not that I, insane. Like, when I serve it, it, I need a big spoon because I'm trying to cover more ground. But when I eat it, I eat it with a fork just to make sure that I don't do that weird dipping motion and okay, bow my I head to some greater God. wait until I'm in L.A. next and we are going to go out with a group of people somewhere that serves ice cream, possibly after dinner. And we're all going to order ice cream and you're going to sit there and use your fork and eat your ice cream. And let's just see what happens. I'm going to put my money on an ambulance shows up. I'm, I'm either going to eat it with a fork and freak everybody right. out or right. I'm, or I'm going to like take it up like a like a like a cup of tea and just like throw the ice cream slowly and like have it roll into my mouth with I like no no dip no, over. no 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 utensil 
You no, that doesn't work. You must eat it with a fork because that's how strong you feel about it. You can't wimp out and eat it out of the ice cream cup like another type of psychotic crazy person. <laughs> so you want me to be your type of crazy person? <laughs> uh, no, I want you to stand behind the statements that you're making about eating ice cream with a fork. I will. I don't see the problem. I don't see the issue I, because real ice cream can know, be eaten with a fork. Like people who like vision. their ice cream melted is that's that's insane. I, I I have this you know that Seinfeld episode where George is at the tennis match and he's eating the ice cream sundae and it's all over his face and they put him on the jumbotron. I have this vision of you at a Dodger game eating ice cream out of the the batting helmet that they serve the ice cream in, like the upside down batting helmet, and eating it with a fork. And them finding you and putting you on the jumbotron, and then six policemen with a straitjacket come and take you away. If that happens, then I'll really know Big Soup is in control of our society. Because <laughs> I'll be like, "Oh, okay. you you want me to eat it like soup? I see. Even though it's a freaking dessert." I think that enough crazy talk <laughs> has gone on <laughs> right now that okay, we need fine. to bring this home because. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. We want people to come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your resistance is just making me dig my heels in further. So Clearly. Yeah, I think that QAnon, flat earthers, anti-vax, all those people are total distractions. What is going on at our dinner table? Why is this the first food we serve in a meal when it's just food mush that's salty and requires its own bowl? So pretentious. I am going to just say thank you. And gracefully walk away. Okay. Soup's up. I feel really bad for Greg. When someone reacts that strongly to an outside opinion, you know someone else is pulling the strings. The way supers like Greg are so quick to say, My mom used to make it for me. I need it when I'm sick. It's been around for thousands of years. You know what else has been around for thousands of years? Rape. Should we keep rape around and shame people for questioning why it still plays such a huge role in modern society? Well, that's it for today. So thank you for joining me. Feel free to follow at Big Soup Conspiracy on Instagram and me, Zara Mizrahi, if you don't already. And if you're enjoying the Big Soup Takedown and want more bonus content, make sure to join my Patreon, patreon.com slash Zara Mizrahi. It's the best place to interact with supers and supists alike, chat about your love or hate with the community, and get an inside look into how I'm taking down the liquidy cabal. We're starting to cook with fire, so wake up, Suple! It's time to question the bowl. Big Soup Conspiracy is an Is OK production hosted and produced by me, Zara Mizrahi, co-produced by Greg Alperin and music by Julio Carmasi and Brian Scarry. Stay safe, everyone.